In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at multiple storms, including the one ongoing today that is going to turn into a major snowstorm for the Northeast. We also have a couple of other storms we're going to be tracking today. Let's dive into things. And as we take a look at kind of the current guidance here this evening, uh, we do have Wi-Fi troubles here at the Direct Weather House. So who knows what's going to happen uh, but this video should be out very quickly as our Wi-Fi has come back on. It's sped up quite a bit since they fixed it, apparently. So, fingers crossed, this video should be out on the evening of April 3rd. Let's take a look at things, and we do have some thunderstorm activity across the southeast here. Also, some showers and thunderstorms in the mid-Atlantic, and we do expect snowfall here for the mountainous and more northern areas of the north east let's move forward towards tomorrow and what we see here is that there is this major snowstorm ongoing for mostly the mountainous areas of the northeast or just the far north areas so we're mo mostly looking here at northern new york uh, northern massachusetts perhaps but mostly just the higher elevations and then primarily the higher elevation areas of vermont and new hampshire uh, but really, it does appear like most everywhere in those states will see some sort of snowfall. And then Maine, they always cash in. It looks like the entire state is going to see some snowfall as well. Let's take a look here at Friday here on the 5th. And what we see is that this low is still around, but it's weakened significantly. And we just see some snow showers left over, some extending southward towards the mid-Atlantic as well. Um, out west, widespread snowfall, mostly lighter though. Uh, we do have a low up here in Montana that is mostly uh, helping and aiding in providing this snowfall. Uh, as we keep going here towards Saturday afternoon on April 6th, we see this snow continues and it appears like our next major low is going to be this one, 989 over Nebraska. We still have a 999 over the northeast or nearby it, uh, providing some flurries and snow showers there. Uh, keep in mind this low, we're going to be watching for some severe weather perhaps, especially as this cold front develops here. Look at Sunday on April 7th. We have this really, really strong cold front there. Uh, we're looking at Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, uh, South Dakota, Iowa, Minnesota, uh, Missouri, and perhaps Arkansas as well. This is especially uh, concerning because we have our low here, and then this cold front just bows out way ahead of it. Typically, you would expect to see a low and then kind of a dragging cold front. But this one, uh, the cold front is really bowing out ahead of it, like I mentioned. Uh, our cold air is shooting straight into the plains here. And we have warm air rushing up these areas in the Midwest. And this is a recipe for severe weather, especially here Saturday into Sunday, 6th into the 7th. So we're going to be tracking this for the Plains states. Let's move towards that afternoon on Sunday and things weaken down quite a bit. Uh, the low stays kind of stagnant, but the cold front way outpaces it. As you can see, it's bowing out way, way more now. And it's losing a lot of that moisture uh, because it's just outpaced everything, even the cold air. So it doesn't even have really a driving force. Uh, no cold air shoving its way into it anymore. Uh, and really, it's just living on whatever it has left in the tank at that point. Uh, we do have warm air rushing northward out ahead of it. So I would say there still is some potential for instability here especially if there is colder air still uh, moving in behind it, but it doesn't seem to be too substantial at this point. So I think after Saturday night, uh, the, the potential may have lowered. Uh, but it's mostly by Monday that we see the residual, whatever's left over of this cold front, kind of just left in the deeper south and some of the south central states like Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia here. Definitely looking at some heavier thunderstorms in these areas. You know, those areas closer to the Gulf, have a lot of moisture to work with, and they see thunderstorms through the year. I mean, there's no months off really down there. Uh, we start to get some moisture uh, surging northward from the Gulf, speaking of it. 1004 here over Oklahoma and Texas, a lot of activity out here to the east of it as this Gulf, rich, rich, rich Gulf air that is featuring a lot of humidity and a lot of uh, higher temperatures here brings in this area of showers and thunderstorms. Uh, mostly I'll be watching for severe weather on this cold front located underneath. So for Texas and Oklahoma there. Also look at this. We don't have precipitation over eastern Texas, Louisiana, or uh, southern Mississippi or southern Alabama. So these areas should be warming up, could be sunny, uh, and that would aid in providing a lot more uh, potential for those thunderstorms and severe weather. 
Definitely things can change though over time. Wednesday afternoon on the 10th here, this low is pretty close to where it was, still featuring some heavier thunderstorms for Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. We have some showers out ahead as we have this really weird warm front here. Um, a couple of frontal boundaries happening here. A very, very messy and complicated storm. By Thursday, we see it's 1,001 here over Indiana. Again, still featuring that warm front, cold front look. Definitely by that point. So the 11th on Thursday looks very, very intense. And again, these areas stayed relatively dry and perhaps sunny. And we see these heavy thunderstorms developing, especially for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and Georgia. I'm going to be watching mid to late next week uh, as this setup seems pretty good for severe weather to potentially occur especially when you see this cold air rushing in uh, right into these areas right behind that cold front and then we have warm air surging northward out ahead of it so this just creates a really really amplified setup down below for those thunderstorms to take place by friday on the 12th here we have a 987 over eastern canada here featuring again a cold front stretching all the way through the gulf of mexico and potentially thunderstorms throughout the East Coast uh, and maybe even severe weather. Something to certainly watch for. By Saturday, everything's cleared up and we have a lot of cold air located over the East. Keep in mind that, you know, for my fellow gardeners, that if we have these continuous cold blasts, I'm going to personally be waiting to plant things outside. You can do as you please, but I am waiting to see if this is going to occur or not. My fingers are crossed because this is that hours 240, and these models have been showing this for months, and it's only panned out about 25% of the time. So, uh, yeah, watch this be the time that it pans out, but I am hoping that it doesn't, and history tells me there's about a 25% chance of this occurring, at least to this degree. So we will be watching closely here on the channel. Let's keep going. I want to take a look at our GFS model here. We get storm number one featuring that cold front. Again, very intense for the plains here. Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, even extending into Iowa, Missouri, and Arkansas there. By the next day, outpacing a lot of it for Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, and Indiana there. Uh, probably getting less intense over time. And by Monday, we do have some isolated thunderstorm chances uh, down below, but not quite as much as what the European model showed. Let's keep going because we do get this kind of plains storm, but watch this. Very different from the European model. We get this low developing in here. However, it wants to take more of a nor'easter track, and this is far off from what the European model showed, which I'll put in yellow. Uh, but the European model really wanted to take this one northward, uh, which is a massive, you know, we're talking uh, hundreds, if not maybe even a thousand miles difference there. So huge, huge, huge differences between the two models on this one which is going to complicate the forecast for now i will say though you know i still think this has some thunderstorm and severe weather implications especially in the southeast particularly on this model as a low tries to form to the north here uh, providing more of a cold front look underneath so for florida georgia south carolina and north carolina some potential for thunderstorms even on this model here and as we move past it we get a little bit of a dry patch where we don't have any major systems moving through and that kind of lasts a couple days here. We're looking at Tuesday the 16th here. We do have a low over the northeast, a stretching cold front kind of behind. Could have some thunderstorms here as far north as Pennsylvania, New York, and Ohio. Wouldn't surprise me one bit with this look. Uh, we do have some activity returning to the plains by this point as well for Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Nothing too organized yet, though. Uh, by the time we reach the afternoon, things become clear, or this is the next evening, actually, Tuesday into Wednesday. 995 over the Dakotas, stretching cold front again, uh, but this one has rich amounts of moisture for a lot of the Midwest, deeper south, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and could be a pretty major event, even reaching the eastern seaboard for some areas Wednesday into Thursday, 17th into 18th. And then we get another major system here for Wisconsin on Friday morning with a cold front stretching underneath, likely featuring severe weather throughout these areas. So you're probably picking up on the kind of theme here that we do expect these things to continue and actually become more numerous over the coming weeks, which is slightly obvious. Obviously, we're moving deeper and deeper into the heart of the severe weather season. But with these cool downs, you can hit some dry patches where we have a week or two of no activity or little to no activity, I should say. Uh, however, this activity looks to pick up, which isn't, you know, always guaranteed. So I think it is worth mentioning. Total precipitation here. Uh, let's move this all the way forward. Uh, we do have some up here for the Northwest and some of the Northern Rockies, some of the Northern Plains as well. 
very, very far western plains of Montana and Wyoming. The west overall is just slowing down, which their rainy season and stormy season overall is the winter. So we do expect this descent to kind of continue as we reach the summer, which is usually very, very dry for these areas. So we do expect to see this continue to slow down even beyond this point. Most of your activity is to the east of the plains here where we see areas like Oklahoma and Texas on that western front, and that takes it all the way to the east coast with the kind of exception of a couple of regions there. But with a 10-day forecast, we can expect like this pocket here, you know, this pocket there. Uh, we can't be too reliant on that 10 days out. So we will see where it ends up being. We do upload every single day. So be sure to subscribe as we will go over these things and see how these models change and what they're calling for. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.